Greetings. Uh, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the Minister in Placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. Today is the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter. And it's about eight weeks since, of course, public worship was curtailed because of the need to uh, prevent the risk of sharing of COVID-19. But let's begin with the traditional Easter greeting. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Friends, uh, please continue to use the contact details that are on our website to share any feedback you've got about the services or ideas you might have or contributions you'd like to make. And why not share the YouTube link that's also found on the St Luke's website with a friend so others can share in these videos as well. For those of you who are watching this on May the 17th, and as long as you're watching it before 10 o'clock, you'll have the opportunity to share in a Zoom-based gathering. This will be something that we'll be doing each week from May the 17th onward. We'll be hearing in a few moments a reading concerning Paul and uh, a speech Paul gives to a group of Athenians and he talks to them about how close God is to them. Let's come before God in prayer because God is always close to us and we can always pray. Creator God, you are nearer to us than we can imagine. By your Spirit, may we hear your word for us during this time of worship. To you do we give our thanks and praise as we consider the wonder of your way shown in the beauty of a clear, fresh morning, in the joy and inspiration of music, in the amazing structure of the subatomic world from which all things are formed. We particularly give you thanks, loving God, that you came and come to us in the person of Jesus and that in him you offer life to the world and love to its people. Forgive us when we are too blinkered or distracted to be conscious of your presence with us. Forgive us when we see the life you offer as only being for ourselves. Help us to hear your transforming love, speaking to us of respect, dignity and worth, telling us that we are loved and that we are to love one another. In the knowledge of this love and forgiveness, work through us to bring your life, hope and justice to others. In the power of the Holy Spirit, the name of Christ. Amen. In his second great journey, Paul travelled with the disciples Silas and Timothy to the great cultural hub of Athens. In the following reading, we see how Paul is able to use the Athenian search for meaning as a cue to proclaim the word. This reading is from the New Living Translation. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 to 23. While Paul was waiting for them, Silas and Timothy, in Athens, he was deeply troubled by all the idols he saw everywhere in the city. He went to the synagogue to reason with the Jews and the God-fearing Gentiles and he spoke daily in the public square to all who happened to be there. He also had a debate with some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. When he told them about Jesus and his resurrection, they said, what's this babbler trying to say with these strange ideas he's picked up? Others said, he seems to be preaching about some foreign gods. Then they took him to the high council of the city. Come and tell us about this new teaching, they said. You're saying some rather strange things, and we want to know what it's all about. It should be explained that all the Athenians, as well as the foreigners in Athens, seem to spend all their time discussing the latest ideas. So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I notice that you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines and one of your elders had this inscription on it, to an unknown God. This God, whom you worship without knowing, is the one I'm telling you about.
Living in Australia today, things are so unlike the situation that the Apostle Paul faced in Athens 2,000 years ago. According to the passage from the book of Acts that we just heard read, Paul got exasperated by the numerous statues of gods in that ancient city. There were shrines and altars to all sorts of gods everywhere. And we still know some of their names, don't we? Zeus, Apollo, Poseidon, and of course, Athena. The list goes on. Paul, as a good Jew, saw this as just atrocious. But his response is fascinating and instructive. As we heard, Paul comes before the council, a gathering of the intellectuals of Athens, which meant at the Areopagus, a rock outcrop not far from the Acropolis. And you can often look that up on, on the website and see a picture of it. And despite Paul's deep sense of unease about what he saw in Athens, he did not begin his long speech to the council with a blast about idolatry. No, he refers to a shrine he has spotted on his wanderings around the city, a shrine to the unknown God. In, he begins, in other words, by affirming the yearnings of the people of Athens for the divine. It's well worth your time to read the whole of the speech in Acts 17. It's quite long, of which we, of course, only heard the opening couple of lines read by Mike. In the speech, Paul seeks to make known the nature of this unknown God, who he proclaims as the true God, the God who is creator of all things, the God who is not far from any of us, the God in whom we live and move and have our being. He concludes the speech by speaking of Jesus, the one raised by God from the dead as an assurance for all. Now, some of the council members, when they heard this, thought he'd lost his marbles. Others wanted to hear more. What interests me is the way Paul validated the yearnings of the people of Athens for the divine, how he listened to them how we sought to help them see the God of Israel, the God of Jesus, as present, already in their midst. In Australia, we don't have shrines all over the place to gods known or unknown, although maybe we have different kinds of gods these days, perhaps gods of sport, gods of commerce, perhaps. But like the Athenians, surely there is amongst people today a yearning for the divine, a yearning for the one who is not far from any of us. Where would you say you find God today? Perhaps you've been surprised by where you have encountered the God made known in Jesus. Many speak of connecting to God in times of silence or the beauty of nature or in music, away from the hustle and bustle of the everyday. People speak of getting reacquainted with the divine in these days of lockdown because there's space. Karl Barth, the great 20th century theologian who wrote so much about God's revelation in the person of Jesus, loved the music of Mozart. He played it every day. Barth heard something in the music of Mozart. He heard in that music, he said, the music of the divine. The Celtic approach to, to prayer is interesting. Celtic Christians compose prayers that acknowledge the presence of God in the simplest aspects of everyday life, from stoking a fire in the morning to putting it out in the evening, in rising for a new day and in retiring to bed, even in the milking of cows. Because Jesus suffered and died, we speak too of God's presence, perhaps God's particular presence and closeness with all who suffer, all who face dark places, that God is particularly present in those terrible COVID-19 intensive care wards in Italy, France, London and New York. Where would you say that you have seen God today? Where have you been surprised by the presence of God? As Paul said to the Athenians at the Areopagus, I'll get that right, God is not far from any of us.
Let me now share, picking up the, the idea of the Celtic approach to prayer, a Celtic affirmation and then a Celtic prayer. Both of these come from at least a thousand or more years ago. First of all, the affirmation. You are the peace of all things calm. You are the place to hide from harm. You are the light that shines in dark. You are the heart's eternal spark. You are the door that opens wide. You are the guest who waits inside. You are the stranger at the door. You are the calling of the poor. You are my Lord and with me still. You are my love, keep me from ill. You are the light, the truth, the way. You are my saviour this very day. And then that, after that affirmation, a short prayer, or maybe an affirmation. See what you think. God to enfold me, God to surround me, God in my speaking, God in my thinking, God in my sleeping, God in my waking, God in my watching, God in my hoping, God in my life, God in my lips, God in my soul, God in my heart. God in my sufficing, God in my slumber, God in my ever-living soul, God in my eternity. At the 10 o'clock service, if you're going to be involved in the Zoom service on May the 17th, there'll be some time for prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. But uh, as part of this video service, let's spend some time praying for others. And I'm going to use a resource from the Disciples of Christ Church, which is a church in the USA. But before I use that resource and before I lead in the prayer, let's just pause for a moment and hold before God, the God is who is present in all sorts of situations, the needs of the church, the needs of the world, particularly thinking of those impacted by COVID-19, the needs of our local community, the needs of others who are heavy on our own hearts, perhaps people we know who have real needs and concerns. And let's also not forget ourselves and our own needs and our own worries that we wish to lay before God. Let's, uh, let's pray. Gracious and compassionate God, we pray for those around us who need your care and ask that you would make of us your instruments of healing, peace and redemption. We pray especially for those we have named to you this day in our hearts and others we lift to you in the silence of this time. Reveal your presence with them and with us, God of life, that as people of renewed faith and vitality, we may be empowered to serve your world and so give glory to you. For we offer our prayers and our lives in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. بسم الآن والأبن والروح القدس الإله الواحد آمين أبان الذي في السماوات ليتقدس اسمك ليأتي ملاكوتك لتكن مشيئتك كما في السماء كذلك على الأرض أعطنا خبزنا كفافنا اليوم واغفر لنا ذنوبنا وخطايانا كما نحن أيضا نغفر لمن أخطأ إلينا ولا تدخلنا في تجربة لكن نجنا من الشرير لأن لك الملك والقوة والتسبيحة إلى الأبد آمين go well into this week. And remember, even in the most mundane moments of life, God is present, God is close. And be ready to be surprised by where you might discover God in your daily living. And may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day forevermore.